Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of I Am Christina D'Arcangelo. This episode, we did not advertise for, nor did we tell any of the production team what we're doing, because we have something that we need to discuss with everyone just to bring some clarity and light to a situation that each of us have been involved in. Welcome, Tiffany Watkins, Lady Canna to the I Am Christina D'Arcangelo show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Not so happy about our topic that we have to cover, but I'm always happy to be on your show. I love having you. We talk all day. So. <laughs> we do. When we show up on these podcasts, you know, it's kind of like we've, we're just having another conversation like we do on our Zoom meetings. So... Do you want to kick it off so I don't have to start this topic off for once? I don't want to steal your thunder in this oh. topic. No, no problem. Um, you know, over the last few weeks, uh, I know I've seen an uptick in people on social media making sure that folks understand I may have been hacked. Don't accept new friend requests from me. Hey, that's not me. I've got a whole account with erroneous information and I'm trying to figure out how to get this off of, off of social media. And, you know, for, for a long time there, I thought, Oh, these are isolated until I received a message that my account had been compromised. And I'm rarely on social media. My teams are on social media for my companies, but I'm not, I personally don't use social media that often. And to find out that folks were receiving messages from me. Um, I was just like, I got to Now I have to put out this message. Hey, that's not me. I'm not sending you a new friend request. I'm not reaching out into your DMs to talk about anything or offer you anything. And I saw a few more friends, uh, you know, entrepreneurs with whole accounts where they were refusing to shut it down. They're completely mirroring their business and telling lies. But I believe the straw that broke the camel's back, that proverbial camel, poor camel was when I received a message from someone that I recently featured in Vanguard Media Online's magazine. And she said that a company had reached out to her to offer her a feature of her article in Vanguard on a plaque. And this plaque was upwards of, well, I, I think it was just close, just under $300. $300 and then it had a $90 fee for this and then a uh, $80 fee for that and all these things that rounded up to if you, if you got every option they were offering, it was about five to $600. And I was like, what? And, you know, I, so I reached out to the company. Do you mind if I mention which company that is? Go ahead. Say it. It's called That's Great News. And so I looked around and I was like, what is this? And I saw that I saw that they do this with multiple things. And so I reached out and I asked, Hey, how did you get these articles? What do you, well, these are public. This is public. And so all we're doing is offering a plaque. And I said, okay. And I politely ended my conversation with them. And, you know, now I'm like, it's time for a cease and desist. And so before that, I reached, I went out to my network and I said, Hey, it's Tiffany. Um, we don't have association with any companies that create plaques for our articles. We are not in agreement with this and you're not reaching us when, and they're not, and we're not reaching out to you when this is happening. And I had a few people reach out to me and go, Hey, I was just contacted. I just let it go. Oh, Hey, I, I was contacted. I was wondering about this. I was going to reach out to you about this. And I was just like, wow, how many people have they done this to? How many of these women have been reached out to and asked for money to take a page out of our print magazine and paste it to a board and then resell it? Um, you know, and these things are happening all over the place. It's happening too often. But then about four days ago, I received a telephone call mm -hmm. and it was very confusing. A woman who I placed on a panel to speak about cannabis for seniors, she, she, and she's a senior herself. She called me, but it was seemingly by accident. We were very confused at first before she realized 
this is your number, but I've just received a message asking about medical services and information, but they say they're you, but it doesn't sound the same. I remember your voice. This is, and I said, did this come from my telephone number? And she said, yes. She said, I just clicked call back and it called me. So someone has also taken my, uh, my telephone number and masked it. Now I'm not <laughs> special. This happens a lot. It's just the fact that it's just keeps happening over and over again. Mm-hmm. We have to do something. This has to stop. Mm-hmm. And I know that Christina, you've had your own issues with this that we've both seen with our own eyes. Yeah, that's why we decided, y'all, that we need to bring this up to the forefront because um, this is nonsense that this keeps happening. We have worked very, 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 very hard to get where we've gotten to in our careers. I mean, listen, we're we're not these spring chickens here. <laughs> you know, we, we're a little bit older. And it's because we've served our time and we've done what we've done on purpose intentionally with our careers, whether it's building brands, um, developing products, uh, building call centers, doing clinical research, patient advocacy, technology, you name it, we've been there, we've done it. So we understand that people may be enamored by us. I don't know what it is, but the point is, um, I have a, someone who uh, went on Facebook and created it last year. <laughs> Um, CD in San Francisco and I got a promotion. Now I'm Dr. D'Arcangelo and um, this person, I don't know what they're trying to do on Facebook, but they're pretending to be me. They even stole a picture of my son and I together from a photo shoot we had for our family uh, pictures two years ago. Like this is loco, crazy. And then uh, we also had an incident that happened this past Friday where <laughs> Tiffany and I happen to be on the phone talking to each other ending the week as we do a lot of times. And I Googled my name and up comes after so many pages, my bath line, Christina D'Arcangelo. And wait a second now, like it's on some discount website by these, I don't know who these weirdo people and they're selling my bath line five, six bucks cheaper <laughs> product. Um, claiming that it's my stuff when we all know it's not my stuff because I formulated my stuff with certain intention based on cannabinoids and terpenes back to aromatherapy. There was an actual science to my products, unlike many of the other bath products that are out there that are not done by professionals where they do it in their kitchens. Um, we don't do that. You know, we actually have a bath partner, a woman bath partner who handles all the bath lines and it only comes through my website, whether it's ChristinaDArcangelo.com or Etsy, we're actually on the store right now for Etsy. But lastly, we also have certain things that we are selling on Affinity Patient Advocacy uh, .org's website for candles and my dad's bath line. And I thought, which was really interesting, was that they didn't steal my dad's bath line because you can't really, if you look for Captain Dark, it doesn't come up as strong in the SEO as Christina Arcangelo does. So. You know, it's just been kind of one thing after another. We've also gone through the things where people tag us. They have a cause. They have a mission, something they're trying to do. And they tag us, you know, whether it's it's Tiffany, you know, if it's Vanguard or Lady Canna or C- my personal brand, CD or Affinity Patient Advocacy or Biopartners or whatever. We're now getting tagged on these people's personal missions. You know, first off, a discussion needs to be had with us before you start tagging us in things without us even knowing about it. It's showing up in our DM thing, notifications that we have now been tagged in some kind of whatever it is. And it's not something that we can get around a lot of the times. And we don't want our work, good work and our names to be diminished by these things. So, you know, this is impact Mike major, who is the chief communication officer against all these companies. Now who's trying to corral all this because listen, folks, if you want to talk to us about something, there's a way to do that. And that's to reach out to us directly in an email. You know, we have info at all these different, you know, for all these different companies. Mike Major is behind a lot of this. Mike's email is very prevalent. You know how to find us because you've obviously stolen phone numbers. Oh, Amazon gift cards. Remember that, Tiff? That happened this year. Yeah, with that's, an, that's one of those old scams, yeah. You know, to our board, you know, for the nonprofit, looking like I needed Amazon gift cards. No, sweetheart, I don't need gift cards at Amazon. I love Amazon. 
and we're on you know the smile program for affinity patient advocacy but that doesn't mean that i'm trying to get you to buy me gift cards from amazon mm-hmm. that's not me so we need to you know there people need to come up with a, a new idea on how to make money and generate revenue that has nothing to do with other people's work it's like the hackers like when they come in and they try to hack you you know like you know when when i was working I'm back on COVID and I got hacked, you know, by the Chinese in the FDA website. They hacked the FDA. Listen, people, if they can get into the FDA, these people can get any. So please use your talent for something good. And if you need a project for something good, you can contact us because we have a lot of projects going on in our nonprofit. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, if I, if I had a call to action for Mm -hmm. us, today you know it i think it is that we have to look out for each other so if you see something or if it happens to you start saying things publicly Mm -hmm. because you know i didn't say anything publicly when my uh, account on one of my accounts on social media was hacked and was asking people for things through dms i didn't say anything i was just like hey i said something to facebook but i didn't go to my public network outside of putting a post saying hey you see something for me it's not real i only have one account but doing this, what we're doing now, even if you don't have this type of platform, just do what you can. Let everyone know that this is happening. And, you know, for those who are out there who are possibly listening that do this type of interactions with folks, if you want endorsements from people, reach out to them. There's a reason why everyone can not endorse everything. It's not that we our egos are inflated to the size of the sky. It's not about that. For me, in my business, and I know this is definitely for Christina, we like to help people. We like to connect the dots for folks. We like to, we like to provide resources that help people get ahead. Essentially, what we're doing is giving back, grateful for what we have, and we try to give it back. But that means I have to guard what I'm endorsing. I have to guard what I'm associated with, because if its background is not aligned with my ultimate message, that is damaging for me. And that means that I get to help less people. And that is not, that's not cool for me. It has nothing to do with, you know, oh, you know, you're going to be Tiffany Watkins, only one Tiffany Watkins. I don't care if there's a thousand of me. It's not about me. It's about impeding the work that I do. So it's all fun and games and we have to put out these little things and it's cheeky. But the bottom line is that when I get diluted, I can't help as many people as I intend to. And that's just sad. Well, that and also the work we do, depending upon the work that we're doing at that moment in time, because it's across all these different companies and different venues, we are highly regulated, highly regulated. Working in cannabis, we're highly regulated. Uh, CBD, highly regulated. Clinical research, highly regulated. Patient advocacy, highly regulated. These are all federal regulations. We work in the federal space. So that's one of the reasons why we're so careful about what we talk about in public and what we get behind, because we work in a regulated industry. You know, we're just not sitting here having tea and cookies and talking about the sunshine that we happen to be having outside. We're working in a regulated industry. We can't, so like stealing Vanguard Media publications, say, and putting it on a placard and selling it for $500 or $600 at the end of the day, that's not acceptable. You may think you're going to get a grip on that 600 bucks, but now the wrong person sees this and then thinks that TIFF is now capitalizing on things that she's not. She's not making that money. She hasn't done this. You know, she hasn't exploited her interviewees. I was interviewed on Vanguard, um, and you know, a couple years ago. And I'll tell you what, I'd be pissed off if someone took my article that I did with Tiff and then comes back around. I was waiting actually, but then I thought, no, you know what? They're not going to hit me up because I'm too close to you. There, then I will go in and start asking questions. What's going? Okay, let's talk. Oh, sure, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and who do I send the money to? And where's the contract and all those things that we would normally do because we're business people. So they would have been found out again. So like, seriously, it's not just that we're getting upset that people are stealing our stuff and our, you know, name and whatever. 
No, it's because we work in a regulated, regulatory based environment and we need to protect who we work for and what we do for a living. Absolutely. 100%. And I think, you know, another thing that we can say is that if anybody is viewing this or listening, depending upon how they picked up the podcast, if they have questions that because it's happened to them and they need help, they can ask, you know, to send us an email and ask us, you know, hey, ladies, I've had this situation. I listened to your podcast, da, da, da. And, you know, we are happy to answer and help other people that have been involved in these scams, too, because it's a sin when this happens. It's like it's like the guy. Do you remember back in the day, Tiff, where they faked a homeless person that they were raising money for at a gas station and they went to jail? I didn't hear about that. Yeah, there's they, been a, a couple of situations where homeless people were involved in doing fake fundraisers. Exactly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, and we've had people that tried to steal from the nonprofit before where we were running. This was before you had come on board, Tiff. We were running um, a fundraiser and um, we had a website and all this collateral up and somebody took all of our stuff, replicated it, diverted the fundraising funds to their bank account. It looks like everything was me. And we found out about it because the person was stupid enough and called someone on my board in the middle of the night. I don't know if they were drunk or something. And they said something to my board member and my board member was like, oh, and she called me at 4 a.m., 4 a.m. And this was Jen Oldfield. She called at 4 a.m. And I'm like, what's going on? She's asking me to get in front of my computer. Don't scream because Christian's sleeping. Like, I need you to type this email, this uh, website in and all this stuff. And it was almost the same as as my fundraiser, but like a couple things were off. And I was like, oh my God. And so I had to call the police because the lady was stalking us. I mean, it, it, it really got very bad. Very, very, very bad. So you know what? We we really need to, you know, make sure that people understand there's also a legal place for you. You know, there's a place for everybody, people who do good and people who do bad. And the bad people, there's a place for you too. And if you continue to do these things from a legal standpoint, charges can be filed. You can go to jail. If you make a certain amount of money off of somebody else fraudulently, you can go in for RICO, which is federal. You'll do fed time and it won't be in a cush cross place. It'll be a shitty jail, federal prison. Keep it up. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's unlawful. And 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 it's morally just horrible. Yeah. This stuff needs to stop. We hear about it too often. We know it. a lot of people have spoken about this. We're not reinventing the wheel here. No. We're, we're just doing a little bit of venting and trying to just provide some awareness that it's happening everywhere. It's it's happened to us. You know, I didn't think anything like this would ever happen to me. You know, I, I've been helping people for a long time. My, my Most of my career for the last 30 years has been service-based of helping people. Mm-hmm. And it just it, I didn't think that would put me on anyone's radar to want to take my stuff. Get out of here, you know, but mm-hmm. it's happening. And it's just not, it's not fair to anybody when it does. So I hope this has been uh, helpful to to anyone out there for sure i hope so too i hope this serves as an (laughs) in-service you know that this is we're we've identified this you know we know that it's going on and you know if you're going through it don't feel alone um because it's happened to the best of us we're not the only ones that it's happened to on our team it just you know we're the ones that decided that you know we're going to speak out about it and why not let's talk about it on my podcast so thanks tiff for joining me today to talk about this out of your busy schedule once again taking time to fight fires and <laughs> deal with this crazy stuff thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome so as we always say remember we are the same i am christina d'arcangelo thank you for joining me today <laughs>